Hi everybody, welcome back to Small Caliber Arms Review. I'm Richard, and for the last few hours I've been out on the big red thinking machine. That's right, the lawnmower. I've been out maintaining the range and everything. And while I'm out there riding along on the lawnmower, I'm thinking about current events in the news. And one of the things that really bugs me, one of the latest things that's been said is about the lowly 9mm. Probably the most uh, common caliber in the world because there's so many other countries that use 9 millimeters for both civilian use and military use. They're a NATO round, so they're extremely popular. And they're extremely popular in the United States for an effective tool at defending yourself. Uh, most guns are defense weapons. In fact, if somebody, if there's a law-abiding citizen that owns a firearm, he bought it for a defensive weapon or a, a tool to enjoy to take out to the range. I don't want to say toy. They're not toys. Um, but you can buy it for personal defense or you can buy it for target practice. You can buy it for competitions, friendly banter between, you know, people that are enthusiasts of this. And um, the nine millimeter is a great choice for anything, whether it's personal defense or whether it's competition or just planking. 22 is a little more affordable for planking, but um, so they want to eliminate, Joe wants to eliminate the 9mm. He said a 22 caliber bullet will lodge in a lung, and we can probably get it out, maybe able to get it, and save the life. A 9mm bullet blows the lung out of the body. So the idea of these high caliber weapons is that there is simply no rational basis for it. No rational basis for it. No rational basis for it. Now They've also been after the ARs for years. Now, if you got a keen eye, you'll notice that this one is a 22, just because it was easier to get to than some of the other ones. But the AR-15, the weapon of war. No, the AR-15 is not a weapon of war. It is a civilian version of the M16, but there are civilian versions of race cars too. It doesn't mean that they are race cars. They just look that way. And this is not a military weapon. It just looks that way. So there's so many politicians out there that say, that talk out of both sides of their mouth. They say, we're gonna take these away from you. And then they say, no, we don't wanna take these. Nobody wants to take your guns. And I've heard that for years. We're not talking about taking guns away from people. Nobody's taking away anybody's gun. They're gonna say, that if you give them bump stock, it's gonna be the slippery slope. I certainly hope so. It's not that I want to take away people's guns. Those common sense measures would in no way infringe on any constitutional right. It's going to be the slippery slope. I certainly hope so. It's not taking away your Second Amendment rights or doing away with guns. To convince people that this isn't about taking their guns away. I certainly hope so. They view it as a norm, and they don't want any of their rights infringed, even if that norm threatens, uh, you know, threatens people's lives. I am a Second Amendment supporter. I do not want to take away any gun rights um, that are held through constitutional protections. Long before I started doing a YouTube channel, I've had friends that said, uh, you know, friends on the other side of the aisle that have said, oh, nobody wants to take your guns. And then you got all these politicians that say the exact same thing. But when there's a tragedy in the news, the Democrats say, never let a tragedy go to waste, which makes me wonder, what started these tragedies? How did these tragedies come to be? Is it just somebody that said, eh, I'm going to go out and shoot a bunch of people? Was there a little help? I, I don't know. I'm not implying anything. Uh, I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but sometimes conspiracies end up being right. It's just you need to get that proof together to make sure it is. Anyways, um, there's, there's so much stuff in the news that they don't want to take it away. They do want to take it away. You can't trust politicians, most of them. There are a few good ones out there. Uh, Rand Paul's a good one. Trey Gowdy was a good one. And most of the politicians, though, not most of them. Yeah, probably most of them are bad, I would say. They want power. That's what they seek, and they will do what it takes. They will say what they have to say to get the power. Hell yes, we're going to take your AR-15, your AK-47. We're not going to allow it to be used against our fellow Americans anymore. I'm not interested in taking anything from anyone. What I want to make sure that we do is defend the Second Amendment. It's not that they really want to represent the people. It's that they want power. Some of them aren't like that, though. There are some great ones out there. 
There are some of them that stick up for our rights because it takes somebody, a mouthpiece, to, to bring our concerns to them so that they will or will not do the things that they should or should not do. Uh, Joe says that uh, the Constitution, none of the, none of the amendments are absolute. Yes, they are absolute. Uh, when they start changing them and saying they're not absolute, uh, okay, now you can no longer r worship that religion because we say it, it's, it's not, you know, whatever. Uh, you can't have a firearm because, you, no, you know, it shall not be infringed means just that. Don't infringe on it. Don't change it. You don't mess with it. And for people to say that, well, the founding fathers intended for, you know, it to be muskets. No, the founding fathers intended it for it to be a military weapon because everybody had military weapons at that time. The military's weapons and the civilian weapons were the same thing. They were either flint locks, cap locks, match locks, whatever. They were all the same. And then Joe says, well, you couldn't buy a cannon back then. You couldn't buy a cannon when the Second Amendment was back. Yeah, you could buy a cannon back then. You could buy a cannon today. I have two of them. Um, and it's just, it's crazy. They tell all these lies, um, like these will blow the lungs out of somebody. A nine millimeter will blow your lungs out. No, they tell lies to make things seem more horrific so that people that don't know, the people who are uneducated in firearms will say, oh my God, that's horrible. We have to get rid of these things. It doesn't matter what weapon you give me. I am a law-abiding citizen. If this was full auto, it doesn't mean I'm going to go out and kill somebody. I'm not going to do it because it's semi-auto. But if it was full, I would, no, that's not the way it works. Um, you can give me an A10 with a 30 millimeter GAU-8 in the front of it there. I would love to have one of those. It doesn't mean I'm going to go out and blow everything up and kill everything. No, that's not the way it works. It's the mental problem in this country that is the issue. It's not the law-abiding gun owner. Not at all. So they need to address the mental problem. You don't uh, go after the car manufacturers when someone is, you know, busted for drunk driving. Um, it's not the car manufacturers problem. It's the drunk drivers problem. Uh, you don't go after the pressure cooker industry when there's a bombing or the backpack industry when the pressure cooker is carried in a backpack and set up at a marathon. That's not the way it works. But it seems like whenever there's a gun problem, they go after the gun owners and the gun manufacturers because they say, well, if they didn't exist, then it couldn't happen. Stabbings exist. Does that mean we get rid of all the knives? Bombings exist with pressure cookers. Does that mean we get rid of all pressure cookers? No, there's people out there who can responsibly use a pressure cooker to can their vegetables at the end of the harvest. There's people who can drink responsibly without going out and getting in a vehicle and going out and killing somebody. There's people that can do all sorts of things, including owning these weapons of war without causing atrocities. So keep your hands off our rights and do something to combat the problem, which is a mental health problem. Anyways, that's my little rant and the things I was thinking about while I was out mowing the lawn. So if you could reach up here and hit this button to check out some of my other videos and hit this button over here to subscribe if you haven't already. And thanks for watching Small Caliber Arms Review.